Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be playing Corky. At the beginning of the video I'm gonna be explaining to you how you should build Corky. If you don't care about how to build Corky and just want to go to the gameplay, timestamps in the description so you can skip to the gameplay immediately. Keep in mind I'm giving away 10 skins this month, all you gotta do is put down a comment under this video and under some other videos. Okay. So about Corky and how to build Corky, there are obviously different types of builds and I'm going to be talking about why I believe this is the best build. So obviously you can build Corky with a man immune. So uh, let me show you this item, man immune. Um, I don't like it. And the reason for that is because the way that I have my runes on Corky allows me to get away with, with without a mana immune because the only reason people buy mana immune on Corky is to save mana. Um, let me, I'm actually already gonna show you what runes I use. So as you can see, I use regeneration and mana flow band. And if you use my build, you have to use these two. Obviously, if you go for mana immune, you can, you, can, you can use other runes here, which could be good, but I think it's not worth it because my build has way more damage than the mana immune build. So, the way that you're supposed to build Corky is get a Trinity Force first. Now, the only problem with my build is um, your early game power spike is not going to be as strong as the Man Immune. Because the Man Immune costs 2,700 gold and Trinity Force 3,533. So, obviously, Man Immune is very easy to get before the first dragon. And Trinity Force, um, if you want to get Trinity Force before the first dragon, you have to get one kill and one assist at least to get it before for four minutes, which is obviously not easy to do, right? But it's okay, you know, it's okay because you're still, you're going to have your package anyways at the first dragon. That's why I believe this is the best build. So start with a Trinity Force. This is your first major power spike. Finish off the Trinity Force without buying any boots because you want to get the Trinity Force as fast as possible. And when you get this, uh, when you get the Trinity Force, you are going to do so much damage. For example, when you use your first ability and then a basic attack, it's huge burst. When you use your third ability and a basic attack, it's also very, very nice. Your ultimate, like you have six ultimates, you know, you, under, you get the point here. That's why Trinity Force is amazing on Corky and that's why I get it immediately in the early game. Okay, after Trinity Force, I almost always go for Glutinous Greaves. These are just, you know, really, really nice for Corky. This is basically all the lifesteal you need on Corky. It gives you 8% physical vamp and 8% magical vamp. Corky deals physical and magical damage, so, you know, you basically have 8% lifesteal, which is really, really nice. You know, you're gonna heal up when you deal damage. Okay, I don't have enchantments here because it depends on the game, but I'll get back to enchantments later. I don't recommend you to get an enchantment after your first item already. Okay, let's talk about the next item on Corky. I would say, it, actually 100% of the games, I would go for Infinity Edge. Like, I was gonna th say maybe Static Shift second, but honestly, Infinity Edge just deals more damage. So, you can get Static Shift if you really feel like you cannot engage into the enemy. Because Static Shift is gonna allow you to deal poke damage, right? Because one basic attack is gonna shoot like a thunder to the enemy. But I don't recommend it because, as you can see, Infinity Edge gives you 55 attack damage. And you really need attack damage because Trinity Force only gives you 20 attack damage. And Static Shift gives you attack speed. That is why I said in 99% of the games you should go for Infinity Edge. So basically 100%. So get a Trinity Force and then your Infinity Edge. Again, this is an absolute massive power spike on Corky. Okay, after that, um, I... Let me think. I in yeah. I always go for static shift. I do see some people build a rapid fire cannon. However, I don't recommend it because static shift is just much better. So with Corky, you're very, you can escape very easily. You have your second ability. You have package. You know, you don't really need to maintain a distance with rapid fire cannon. You can get into the enemy, right? So that's why I always build static shift on Corky. These are basically always my first three items on Corky. Let me give you one quick tip that you can do on Corky and basically on any champion. Let's say the enemies have Sona, Nasus, Mundo, basically a lot of healing. What can you do? After you finish your Trinity Force, get a Executioner's Calling. Only the Executioner's Calling. Don't finish the Mortal Reminder. Don't. Like as I said, if they have a lot of healing, build an Executioner's Calling. Uh, build it here. See, this is basically how you're supposed to do it then. Build an Executioner's Calling second, and then build your Infinity Edge, okay? So uh, only do this if you really need to stop the enemies from healing, because obviously it's gonna delay your build, but it is definitely worth it if the enemy has a lot of healing. Keep this in mind, this is very, very important, okay? So when you finish up of these three items, 
it is completely situational what you should build. Guardian Angel is going to be very nice if the enemies have a lot of attack damage and you feel like you need a Guardian Angel, right? Um, Mortal Reminder is obviously going to be very nice to penetrate the enemy's uh, armor. Um, you can even go for Death Stance. However, I don't really recommend you to go for Death Stance because, you know, it's good against burst damage, but you could much rather go for Guardian Angel. Um, you can also go... I, I just lost the item. Uh, you can also go for... Yes, this one. Ma of Ma Morsius. Now, Ma is a very expensive item. And I only suggest you to build this item. This is a very situational item. Only build this item if the enemies have a lot of ability power. And listen carefully. Build this if enemies don't have a... Like, uh, let's say enemies have an ADC Jinx and four ability power champions. And let's say the enemy Jinx is 0-3. So what does that mean? The Jinx is not really doing anything. What you can do is build a Maw of Marmortius. Because this item is going to make you incredibly tanky against ability power. And you know, if the enemy Jinx doesn't do anything anyways, this is going to be a game-changing item. Okay? So when do you build Maw of Marmortius? Build it if the enemy doesn't have... Um, it, either if the enemy doesn't have uh, attack damage, or if the enemy attack damage champion is doing really badly. Right? Only then you can get the Maw of Marmortius. You can also get a Phantom Dancer, perhaps. So I only recommend you to get a Phantom Dancer uh, as your later items if the enemies have like a lot of diving and you don't like you want more damage. Because Phantom Dancer is gonna give you more damage than a Guardian Angel, but it's riskier, right? It's riskier. It does give you it does give you the shield, it's true. It gives you the shield, but obviously Guardian Angel has way better survivability than Phantom Dancer. So do you want like a lot of damage? Get a Phantom Dancer instead of Guardian Angel. Do you feel like you have enough damage and you just want the Guardian Angel? Get a Guardian Angel, right? That is basically how you're supposed to build Corky. And here, Conqueror. I always run Conqueror on Corky. It's just very, very nice. You know, you can stack it with your first ability, basic attacks, ult, everything. You know, it's very, very good. And here, honestly, um, you can go for a lot of runes here. Like, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. Brutal is good. Gathering Storm is okay. Not the best, but okay. You know, you're going to lack early game damage. That's why I go for Brutal, but it's still okay. Hunter Vampirism is okay, too. This one is okay, but if you go for Hunter Vampirism, don't go for Lifesteal Boots. You can go for Ionian Boots of Lucidity if you go for this one. Triumph is... I don't really recommend it because you're quite squishy, so no, don't go for Triumph. Um, Champion, you can also go for Champion if you feel like you are really, really good at Corky and you won't die in the early game. But with Champion, you have to play very passive. Make sure you maintain the Champion the bonus damage until the first Dragon. Then it is actually okay to die because you're going to have Package and Package on top of the Champion rune, you should demolish the enemies in the fight. Okay, and here, as I said, if you go for my build, regeneration is a must-have. And mana, mana flow band is also a must-have. Obviously, unfortunately, you're not going to have a sweet tooth. But as I said, if you don't build a mana mune, you really need these two. With these two, you're not going to have mana problems. If you, if you miss out any one of these two, you are going to have mana problems. As your spells, flash and barrier. You know, for very, very nice survivability. Okay, let's get into the gameplay. Alright guys, on to the gameplay. So I'm playing Corky here and I really think Corky is one of the best champions in the game and Corky can really hard carry games. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a lot of tips and tricks on Corky, but also like how you can really carry the game on Corky because there are a few things that you can really do that I don't see many people do, which I'm going to be explaining to you in this video. Like, you know, how to gank on Corky, how to win lane on Corky, how to fight a dragon on Corky, you know, how to use your package. These are all very, very important things that I'm all going to be talking about in the video. So I meant I told you how to build Corky in the beginning of this video. And now I'm actually going to tell you how to play him. So make sure you give this video a like if you're enjoying it and subscribe if you haven't already. I, we're almost at 30,000 subscribers. So that's crazy. So thank you guys so much for that. Okay, um, as you can see, I'm against an Orianna. And what I'm doing here is, you know, I'm just relaxing. And actually, I'm failing. So I want you to take a look at what I'm doing in lane. And I already failed two times, which is I actually tried to hit my first ability on the Orianna. See, this is a thing that you kind of have to do on Corky. This is how you can trade in your lane. Hit the enemy with your first ability, just like this. Boom, you know, this is, this is good. Hitting the enemy with your first ability. Um, you are going to be able to out-trade almost any champion 
if you're able to hit the enemy with your first ability. So let me give you a really good tip on how to hit your first ability very often. It's true that I filled it in this video, but I'm still going to give you advice on how you should do it. So the way that you can really punish the enemy is look at how low your minions are. So you kind of want, have to predict what the enemy is going to do. If you see that one of your minions is low and you know that the enemy Orianna is going to go for that minion, shoot your first ability in between. Because the Orianna can either dodge your first ability, but if she dodges it, she misses a minion. So that's really good for you. Or she takes the damage, right? So, again, I'm going to repeat. Take a look at your minions. Not the enemy minions, your minions. Take a look at how low they are. And when you when you think the Orianna is going to go for a minion, shoot your first ability on her. So, as I said, it's either going to hit her or she's going to miss a minion. Which is both really, really nice. Okay. So, like, up until now, I actually didn't really do too well. But, you know, it's still fine. Like, as long as I don't die, it's okay. But I actually didn't do too well. You can really punish the enemy when you're playing Corky in the early game, as I mentioned earlier. And I haven't really been doing it right now. Okay. So, um, when do you pick Corky? Honestly, Corky is always good. Be just because of, like, how strong he is. But talking about how Corky works, Corky is a tank shredder. If you're against a lot of melee champions like Mundo, Galio, uh, Darius... <laughs> you know, Wukong, basically melee champions that are supposed to build tank, pick Corky. Corky has a beautiful kit against these champions because your third ability shreds their armor, your first ability is going to be very easy to hit, your second ability is going to allow you to escape, leave a trail to damage the enemy, your first ability is going to be a free hit, your package is going to be, you know, basically everything is good against tanks. So when you see a lot of tanks in the enemies, you can pick Corky. Okay, so um, as you can see, like, you know, I'm, I haven't punished the Orianna too hard, but it's fine. As long as you don't die, you know, as a Corky, you really shouldn't die in the early game. Unless if the enemy, like, hard dives you, because you have your second ability, you have a barrier, and you have a flash. And um, keep that all in mind. Another very, very important thing that I have for you about Corky is don't get baited. Because Corky only has one ability that is mobility which is his second ability. So what I see what I see happen a lot with Corky players is like the enemy gets low and then what happens is the Corky jumps into the enemy with his second ability thinking that he can kill them and then what does the enemy do? Use a barrier and then Corky gets ganked. So if that happens, you die. Don't get baited. It's almost never almost never a good idea to engage with your second ability trust me almost never unless you are ultra ahead in the game so you can like one shot the enemy then it's okay or if you know that there is no enemy around one of these two otherwise never jump in take a look at this i have my package dragon fight look at this beautiful package i got double kill i stole the dragon as well and we cleaned them up this is obviously a very, very important thing, Corky, using your package. So how do you use your package? Corky's package leaves a trail, which is pretty big. Like, you know, you leave a trail. And in this trail, the enemies are like perma-slowed. And it deals huge damage. What does it mean? This trail, you, you have to place it strategically. Like, it's going to be very nice to cut off the path of these enemies. Because if you, you, if you cut it off, they either have to flash over it, jump over it, or take the immense damage which is all good for your team or you can dive right in in the middle of these enemies and um you know dive right in the middle of them with your with your package and then jump away because you're gonna have your second ability again sometimes what i even do on corky is i dive in the middle of them i use my second ability to disengage and then even a flash to run away so why do you think that I do that? I only do that to get a really nice package, you know, because this package is going to leave the big trail and it's going to really do good against the enemy. So as you can see here, I actually did dive the enemy. Why? Look at the map. Ezreal top lane, two people bot lane, easy peasy dive. That is the only reason you should dive the enemy. Otherwise, never do it. Okay? Never, as I said. You either have to be super ahead or you have to know where all the enemies are. Otherwise, it's super risky because it's your only escape ability. So as, when you're playing Corky as well, um, the way that you want to fight is use your third ability 
and during your third ability, shoot your abilities and basic attacks. I actually failed. Oh my god. Oh god, look at this. Oh, I did get the double kill though. Damn. So much damage. So this is yet another thing that you can do on Corky. Your rockets and your first ability deal huge damage. Oh my god, I got wrecked. Wow, that was beautifully played by the Gridas. So your, as I said, your rockets and your first ability deal huge damage. And they both deal AoE damage. So something that's also quite important is every third rocket from your ultimate is like a big rocket. And the big rocket deals bonus damage and it deals damage in a larger radius. So you, you can see it um, uh, in your ability. As you can see, I think this is the yeah this is this is the big rocket, the red one. The red one is the big rocket. So this one has more range, deals more damage, and has a bigger radius. So try to utilize it effectively in a team fight, right? Because this one is gonna allow you to deal massive damage. Another tip that I have for you: don't waste your rockets. So your rockets are gonna be the most effective while using your third ability. Why? Because your third ability is gonna shred the enemy's magic resist and armor, thus making your making your ultimate ability deal more damage. So, if you can, try to save your ultimate like four, five, or six rockets for when you use your third ability. Don't use your ultimate just to poke the enemies, because then it's really not gonna do any damage. So, use your ultimate to maximize your damage per second. Maximize your damage per second. And take a look at this again. Uh, what I did in this game, let me check what I did. It is easy fight. Did I say that? Because, yes, I have another tip for you about the package. Don't always take the package. Actually, I am gonna ask you guys to let me know in the comments why you should not always take the package. This is not an easy question, but I'm really curious about what you, why I said it. You know, let me know, or maybe you disagree. Maybe you disagree. Let me just let me know in the comments. Do you agree with what I said? Uh, and I said, don't always take the package. And if you agree, tell me why. I'm really curious what you guys think. Take a look at this again. I'm looking for a good package, and oh my god, look at this! Look at this! Look at how much I slowed the Nami, and I single-handedly won us the fight. The package is so strong, guys. This is such a good team fighting ability. Like, if you use it well, as you can see, it not only uh, puts down a thrill that slows the enemy, it deals massive damage as well. Absolutely massive damage. Like, again, that was perfect, perfect, perfect Corky play. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you why. I'm just gonna ask you guys to comment it down below. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna ask you guys that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna tell you a very simple combination on Quirky, which I just did. First ability, basic attack. This is your poke combination. So when you poke the enemy, don't use your ultimate. Well, you can, but it's not the best. When you poke the enemy, use your first ability first. Listen carefully. First, whoa. First, use your first ability. Uh, I hope you understood. And immediately after casting your first ability, do a basic attack. Why? Because after you use your first ability, your basic attack is gonna deal bonus damage, because Trinity Force, right? So first ability plus an empowered basic attack is gonna deal really good damage. And this little combination that you can do in like 0.1 second um, is gonna out damage a lot of poke champions, like maybe even Ziggs. If you shoot your first ability, then a basic attack, and then go back. Like, as I said, it's really, really good poke damage, okay? <clears throat> I talk so much during my videos. Like, for real, my mouth gets dry so much when I'm talking. <laughs> I just realized that I forgot to talk about enchantments during the build part. So, let me talk about what enchantment of your boots you should take. Uh, let me think, actually. I want to say it, right? Around 80% of my games, I go for Stasis Enchant. Because you, when you're playing Corky, it's like kind of risky. Because with your package, you want to dive in the middle of the enemies. And then use your second ability to escape. Sometimes it doesn't go well. So what do I do then? I use my Stasis. So if I really feel like I don't need a Stasis. Like if I really, really feel like I don't need a Stasis. You know, it's it's not, it does, it almost never happens. Then I can go for Lock It. Lock It Enchant. Because Locket Enchant is going to provide me and my team a, sh um, a shield. 
I almost never see anyone build Locket anymore, but I still believe it's a really, really good enchantment. You know, Locket is very, very nice. If one of your teammates has a Locket, it provides a lot of value in the later game. So here, again, I have a package. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen. I have a package, and we are ready to fight. Package lasts for... for I think, actually, I don't even know how... Yeah, 60 seconds. It lasts for one minute. Yeah. So package lasts for one minute. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen here. I am like kind of hesitating because you know it's kind of rough but I really want to cut off their path with the package so let's take a look I just dive on the Ezreal actually the Yasuo sorry and I killed him you know this is yet another thing that you can do with the package you can dive into a very vulnerable target because your package has a really long range you know you can dive really far away to a vulnerable target which the Yasuo was a vulnerable target there and kill them right you can kill them <clears throat> my team actually dived way too far there way way too far so when you get a free kill like the Yasuo there you should just do Baron in a situation like this we should have done Baron because like chasing kills is so stupid because you're risking it because you're chasing under the enemy's turrets which is incredibly stupid that's why I didn't help my team because it's stupid you shouldn't chase I started Baron kind of expecting my team to help but they just all went for the kill and gave the enemies shutdown gold for no apparent reason so the best thing to do there is force a five versus four in the baron you know take the baron force a five versus four and um win you know you're basically gonna win if the enemy tries to come fight if they don't you got a free baron right it's a win-win it's a win-win but if you chase the enemies you're just risking for no reason you know you're risking dying for no reason <clears throat> I'm actually really curious why you guys, uh, what you guys are gonna say about my statement earlier about I don't always take my package. I'm really, really curious. You should think carefully about why I don't always take the package. You know, and what I, I'm gonna make it a little easier for you. What I mean with I don't always take the package is I don't necessarily take the package when it's available. I might take it later. Okay, that's that's the the best tip that I gave you right now. All right. Let's take a look here we do inferno we're just kind of bu bursting it and it's it's a little risky but the reason that it worked out is because the enemies were pushed back they were pushed back a lot so what do we do we force a fight even if they like let's say they took the infernal dragon obviously it would suck a lot but it is still worth it oh i almost killed the ass it is still worth it why you may think because if they fully engaged on the inferno we would have been able to kill them take baron and push our advantage even further it's always good to do dragon in a situation like this you know always 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 it's a good call and here it's even better because we got the dragon as well right because we were we were pressuring the enemies really really hard there <clears throat> man what do i have to say i <laughs> i talked a lot during this video yet again like always i don't know how many skins am i gonna give away next next uh next month I might actually throw a big like 20 skin giveaway because my viewership has increased a lot and of course you know the more viewers the more skins that I have to give away because you know giving away 10 skins for like like uh, you know I'm getting like 30 40 thousand viewers every day so 10 skins is kind of hard to win you know but it, I'm only giving it away to the people that comment under the videos that's the whole point right so I might actually do like 20 or 25 giveaway skins the, the only reason that I actually increased the giveaway is because some very generous people actually donated to my YouTube channel. So, you know, I decided to give away more skins because people donate. I want to give it back. I want to give back something, right? All right. So, as you can see, at this point, I am incredibly strong. And when you're super strong like this, you have to focus on not giving the enemies a shutdown. Don't think you have won the game already if you're as strong as me right now. Because... There is always a chance that you throw the game and give the enemy shutdown gold. And if they kill you, they get like 1,400 gold. Let's say the enemy ADC kills you. Of course, what's going to happen? They get 1,400 gold. They're going to make a comeback. They're going to get like a f almost a full item. So as you can see here, you know, we won the game. I got the MVP, dealt a lot of damage. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.